Okay, we are going to do a video on creating a custom Ubuntu installation CD. And we're going to be using the uh, custom Ubuntu ISO creator or Cubic. And um, there are basically, um, to get it fully working and installing, um, I would highly recommend using Cubic because it's going to extract the original ISO for you and it's going to create uh, your CH rooted environment and when it's done there it's going to take all the files and put them in the um, the final ISO for you it's going to do a lot of things for you that um, are painful to do um, on their on their on their own so um, Anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to start here with the, uh, there it is, and we're going to select our work directory. I've already created a work directory, and I already went through this process. So the first time you do it, it'll be a little bit different, but not much. I've already done a few things um, here just for the purposes of the video and to, you know, to make it a little smoother. But uh, first time you do it, everything's real self-explanatory. The first time you do it, it'll go through you know decompressing the ISO the original ISO blah 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 but anyway here it already has these two directories the custom live ISO directory is obviously the work directory and it creates that the first time it runs through so you won't see this the first time you run it but after you run it for the first time you'll run it more than once I'm sure um, you know before you're done uh, so we select this directory that's just called it new CD click next Again, you won't be presented with this uh, these options the first time you um, use it because the first time you use it, you will not have a existing project to continue customizing. So um, I'm going to choose that option. And the first time you get it, you will be presented with this, though. You can customize the, uh, the release name, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm using, obviously, as you can see here, uh, that version of the desktop installer and I'll click next and here is the ch rooted environment I was telling you about from here you can um, do a lot of things you can install um, packages <coughs> that you want installed from maybe custom repositories <coughs> excuse me or other things that will run on the live CD or in the the final installation environment if you go to uh, the this directory if you go to that directory you can edit the slideshow that the installer shows um, during installation it's just HTML files that it will show if you want to edit the slideshow that the installer shows while it's installing you know the slideshow is the um, where it says you know what's new and all that stuff and the, that's the slideshow anyway um, so that's what Cubic looks like, and you will be dealing with, um, I will CD into that directory. You'll be dealing with a couple of CD, uh, a couple of CDs, a few files. There's a pre-seed file that you create. Uh, I call mine atom.preseed that goes in the pre-seed directory. I'll show it to you. Uh, there's some options up there. Um, partitioning options. Um, and to get more information on the preceding options, just do a Google search for um, Ubuntu or Debian Preceed. Get more information on that stuff. And this is the locale. Um, uh, my, if you use the my, this I'll leave this Preceed links to this Preceed file and the um, the boot config files in the uh, below the video. In the info below the video, if you want to use them, just to get just to get started, just to, to show yourself, you can do it real quick. Um, anyway, there's the network stuff. There's the clock uh, mirrors again. Where I'm not, I'm using everything off CD, so I've got all that commented out. There's the user info for their normal user and the root user, and there's the grub stuff. Um, pretty self-explanatory. So that's your pre-seed file, and if you're, there's two other files that you really have to worry about 
to do a completely un unattended installation, which is what we have here, there are three files, well, two files really. Um, I'm saying three because um, you'll need two files, the pre-seed file and depending on whether or not you're running legacy or UEFI BIOS, one of the other files. Now, if you're in legacy BIOS, uh, you'll edit a file called txt.cfg in this directory. This is for legacy BIOS. And I've taken all the grub options out except for the, def you know, the live install. I just edited the any of them, you know, the live install and called it the default and took the rest of them out. And I point it to my pre-seed right there, the one that we were just editing. There's atom.preseed. And there's some more grub options. Again, I'll, this file will also be below the video in the info. That's for legacy BIOS. Here is the file for UEFI BIOS. If you're using US, UF, UEFI BIOS, here's that file. Very similar. There's the file that points to atom.preseed and the rest of its configuration options. So done there. Those are the three files. The pre-seed file under under the custom live ISO directory. The pre-seed file, you have to have your pre-seed file and you have to point to your pre-seed file from either the boot slash grub uh, grub.cfg if you're using UEFI BIOS or the ISO Linux txt.cfg if you're using a legacy BIOS. And that's pretty much it. Once you have those files in place, you'll go back to the custom Ubuntu ISO creator or cubic and you'll click next and here you can now again since I've been using a completely unattended installation it will use by default the typical install manifest and so you won't be able to choose whether you have a minimal or typical installation because with my options that I that I have set in my um, grub.cfg it's gonna choose all that for you so Anyway, back in uh, Cubic, you can select which packages you want to install, check them or remove them, uncheck them. This is a default configuration. When you're happy there, click Next, and it will build your ISO. And I'm just going to cancel it here. But it will place it in your work directory and put that on a CD or a USB key, and off you go. I'm going to close that, and I'm just going to run a quick... Um, uh, in VirtualBox just to show you um, and point it to my custom installer there. Um, this is one I made earlier. So we're just going to point it there. Okay, and this, you know, uh, VirtualBox uses a legacy BIOS. So that would have been the um, ISO Linux um, txt.config. So here you would be if you were starting up on a machine. And it's going to, it's using that again, the ISO Linux uh, txt.cfg for the legacy BIOS that uh, VirtualBox uses. And I'm just going to show you a minute. I'm not going to go through the entire installation. But I'm going to close this. Also, uh, um, VirtualBox takes a ton of resources. I can already see. I've got top running on another monitor and it's just uh, it's pegged anyway uh, I'm just going to show you just a second here and I'm going to power this, this VM off um, when it comes up uh, the slideshow I was talking about that you could edit earlier uh, will, sh will uh, appear and you can click the uh, tick mark next to it and see debug information if you if you custom any, you know customize anything in the pre-seed files you can I'll show you where to tick and get get uh, debug info during the installation process. Um, and there it is. There it is. It's taken off using my pre-seed file, and it's reading in the pre-seed file there. And it's trust me that it will just go through the installer, and there it's partitioning, and it will install itself. I'm going to power it off before this thing runs off of my machine. But that's pretty much the process. Um, again, I will leave the pre-seed file and the two uh, install config files in the info below. Uh, enjoy.